Hey everyone, and today we're taking a look at the Framework Laptop 13. This is a device I wanted to look at for a long, long while, and they finally had a review unit in store to send me so I could maybe run Linux on it. It's a DIY version, meaning I had to assemble it myself, or at least I had to assemble parts of it myself. And so we'll take a look at how easy it is to do so, how Linux runs on it, the performance, and how I like the hardware itself. And as always, we'll also take a look at this message from our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Squarespace, your all-in-one platform to create, publish, and manage your own website. Squarespace has really easy tools to make sure anyone can end up with a nice-looking, well-optimized website, no matter if you know how to code or not. Squarespace has what they call their blueprint system, which lets you pick from a variety of templates that are pre-built and will suit any type of website. And they even have the SEO tools you need to make sure your website doesn't end up in the last page of Google's search results. To go further, Squarespace has their own design engine to create your own pages. You can just drag and drop elements where you want them and you can change the colors, the fonts and just tweak the template however you want. And then you can add some extra features like creating your own online shop with a complete payment system. You can design your own logo from Squarespace, book your own domain name. So click the link in the description below to give Squarespace a shot and you'll even get 10% off your first domain or website purchase. So, like I said, the laptop they sent me was a DIY, a do-it-yourself kit. Meaning that while it mostly came pre-assembled, there were a few things I had to install myself. I will admit I was a bit worried there would be a lot of things to plug in and to look at, but it was really super simple. If you've ever built your own desktop PC, this is going to be child's play. And if you've already simply replaced a GPU or opened up a laptop to install some RAM or an SSD, this will not be an issue either. Basically, what you get is the laptop's body with the motherboard already installed and the screen already in place. What remains to be installed is the SSD that you can buy from Framework or provide yourself. Here they sent me 500 gigs of PCIe 4 storage from Western Digital. You also have to install the RAM under the little cardboard flaps in the center of the laptop. Here they sent me two sticks of 8 gigs of DDR5 RAM that was framework branded. This was pretty easy to do as well, you just slot it in like with any other motherboard. You press it down until it clicks and you're done. Finally, you have to place the keyboard and touchpad cover with one single ribbon cable to plug in. You just slide it into its connector until it's securely attached and the connector doesn't move anymore. I try to be careful with this one because, well, ribbon cables, they're fragile generally. They send me the English QWERTY layout, uh, but they have plenty of choices that you can pick. After that, you open the display to the max and you just clip in the display's bezels. Here they sent me a black frame, but it exists in other colors like gray, orange, green or red and a few others. You need to make sure that the bezel cover is well aligned, but it seems to have magnets, so it automatically locks in pretty easily. And then you close the lid, you check that everything is just sticking in the right places, and you flip the laptop over, you tighten all the screws, and you're done. Now, some of their laptops might have more hardware components, specifically sometimes you might have a Wi-Fi module to install yourself, but it's pretty much as easy to install as an SSD with one additional cable uh, to plug in. You also don't have to bring your own screwdriver. The kit they give you already has one, and it also has a tip that lets you uh, unlock specific things that might have been uh, stuck in place. If you have like little plastic clips, you can lift them off securely without ripping off the entire cover. And uh, the screwdriver's head works with every screw that they use at the bottom of the case for the SSD and everything else. They also sent me a bunch of expansion cards, which are the main draw of a framework laptop. These are the little cards you slot in and that gives you the ports of your laptop. They're hot swappable. They gave me two USB-C ports, one USB-A, one HDMI, one DisplayPort, and an Ethernet port as well. I opted to place two USB-C on the right side, one USB-A and one HDMI on the left, but you can obviously hot swap them as you want. They're super easy to place, you just slide them into one of the four emplacements, they connect through USB-C 
to the motherboard and you can press the little button next to them to slide them out when you want to swap them. And with that, I could plug the laptop in with the supplied USB charger and power brick, which is pretty small, and turn the laptop on. Apparently I did everything right since it booted up and I could use the keyboard to navigate the BIOS because no OS was installed on the laptop, it came with a blank SSD. So yeah, in terms of assembly, it's just very, very easy. I will be honest, I did not even look up the instructions online. I just grabbed the parts and slotted them where I thought they should go, clipped everything in, made sure that nothing was too weirdly misaligned on the sides, and I was good to go. Nothing to check here. Of course, they have very detailed installation guides that you can follow as well that will work if you have zero knowledge of this thing. But me, as someone who really does not like assembling my own computers because I find it mind-numbingly boring, I had a lot of fun with this process, with a laptop. It's funny, it was easy, I liked it. So, of course, I decided to install Linux on that thing. Since Fedora 41 was just released, I decided to go for that one with the beta, to be precise, it wasn't officially out when I started making this video. I grabbed the ISO from Fedora's website, wrote it to a spare USB drive, and just inserted that into the USB-A port that I added to the laptop. And it was detected immediately in the BIOS. I just followed the usual install process, and it resulted in a fully functional system in no time. I decided to apply all the updates to the distro. I didn't even look at firmware updates just to see if everything worked properly, and I wasn't disappointed. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth work fine, the keyboard backlight is supported, the touchpad works with uh, the smooth GNOME gestures, the keyboard works perfectly, suspend and resume as well. There's nothing to add or configure for this laptop to run which is nice. This is with the AMD version of the laptop, by the way, not the Intel one. I'm pretty sure that with Intel's decent Linux support, it should also run perfectly, but this experience is with the AMD version of the Framework laptop. Probably should have uh, said that earlier. The camera, mic, and speakers also perform well, although, as always, the microphone's default volume is way too high for a laptop mic and needs to be lowered by about half for things to work. Even the fingerprint reader located in the power button works perfectly, although registering a fingerprint is finicky. It still even works from the terminal, which is cool. And hot swapping the port from the laptop's body while the distro is running also works fine. Everything is just fully functional. And this is due to Framework's efforts with Linux. They make a special effort to only pick components that are very well supported by upstream versions of the kernel and don't require extra driver work to be, well, fully functional. They also provide distro developers with early versions of their hardware so they can test things out. They even have some firmware updates available through LVFS if you want that, meaning you can get your firmware updates at the same time as you just update your distro, which is really cool. I was even pleasantly surprised to see that the fingerprint reader worked out of the box with nothing to configure, because these are generally pretty tricky parts to get to work under Linux, at least on any of the shelf computer. So here, Framework also picked a part that works. Now, the state of the current library that serves to identify your fingerprints is apparently so-and-so. It can trigger a lot of false positives, uh, but in my experience, it worked pretty well. Now let's benchmark this thing quickly and look at battery life as well. I won't really play any games, it's a mobile integrated GPU from AMD, so you know what to expect. It's going to get you about 30 to 40 FPS on the lowest details at 1080p uh, in most benchmarks like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and Horizon Zero Dawn. Don't believe me? Well, here's a benchmark for these exact settings in Horizon 1080p favor performance settings. Yeah, I said I wouldn't do a benchmark, I lied. It got 41 FPS on average on Wayland running with Proton. Which is why the game says it's running under Windows 10. Please, when I do hardware reviews, there's always five comments saying, oh, you benchmarked the game under Windows. It's a game that runs with Proton. It doesn't know it's running with Linux, so it assumes it's running under Windows 10. I didn't install Windows 10 specifically to fake a Linux benchmark. Thank you very much. Do you know how long it takes to install Windows with all the stupid screens and bypassing the account creation stuff? No one has time to do that. It's running under Linux. It's just Proton. 
Now, as per the CPU itself, it's time I told you what it was. It's a Ryzen 7 7840U. So it's not the very latest and greatest from AMD, but it's a very competent CPU nonetheless, with 8 cores and 16 threads. On Geekbench 6, it got 2570 in single core and 11,270 in multi core. As per battery life, the Framework 13 isn't a big champion. It only has a 61 watt hour battery with that specific AMD CPU. It can also have 55 watt hours instead if you go with a lower res screen and the 7640U instead of the 7840U. For me, this 61 watt hour battery with the 7840U resulted in about 8 hours of looped video playback on YouTube with hardware acceleration enabled in Firefox over Wi-Fi at mid-brightness on the power saver mode. I was using the display at its max resolution 2880 by 1920. It was running at 120 Hz with 150% fractional scaling. Other, less demanding tasks will probably get you up to 8.5 or 9 hours, but that's likely the most you can expect, uh, and that would be by running the display at 60Hz, I think. Still, it is not terrible. It will be sufficient for most cases. 7 to 8 to sometimes 9 hours is full day battery life. It will get you through the day, and that's like what everyone needs, basically. You rarely need more than this. As per the actual laptop's hardware, it is great. The build quality is good and it's absolute proof that you do not need to sacrifice repairability and maintenance options to get a well-built device. It really doesn't flex any more than any other fully soldered computer, apart from the middle of the keyboard, which is the case with every other laptop. And it feels very rigid and very solid, despite the fact that various parts of this thing can be unscrewed and removed. Aesthetically, there is also not much of a trade-off. Apart from the ports, which look weirdly far apart from one another, because, well, they have to make this module thing work. The drawback is that you never have more than five ports at the same time on your laptop, including uh, the audio jack here. It's not a big deal, you can hot swap them as you need them, but if you ever need to plug in three or four peripherals and charge this thing, you will have to invest into a USB-C hub or just a general USB hub uh, to replace the missing ports. Most laptops in this form factor have more than this one, but the fact that you can only take the ones that you really need and change them at will is also pretty cool. Now, the plastic bezel around the screen is also fine. The branding is very minimal. Everything looks good. I also enjoyed the screen. It's bright, colors are good, and it has an anti-glare coating. It goes up to 500 nits, and it covers 100% of sRGB, and it's a 3x2 aspect ratio, which I really like on the laptop. It can go up to 120 Hz as well, but that's only for the 2880 by 1920 display I got in my review unit. You can also get a 2256 by 1504 panel that is a bit less high res, but it still looks solid on paper. It only goes up to 60 Hz though. The keyboard and touchpad are really good here. Among the best laptop keyboards I have used, the keys are stable, they're correctly sized, they have good travel, they feel really nice to type on. The touchpad is smooth glass, it works perfectly for touchpad gestures, very precise, not fiddly at all, and it's also centered in the middle of the laptop, which is really good. Now, other nice things include the mic and the camera privacy switches that will stop them from being used electrically. It's not just basic shutters. And you might as well leave them off all the time because the mic is awful and the webcam is absolute potato quality, like with virtually every laptop that isn't a MacBook. All in all, I really enjoy the form factor and the design and the look and the usability of this laptop. It's lightweight, it's powerful, it lasts long enough, you can swap the ports as you need them, and, well, you don't need me to tell you why repairability is good. Because it's obviously just really good. If you broke the screen or any other part, you can just replace it. If at some point down the line you realize that some of the components are not up to spec and you want something better, you can buy that component 
and change it. The only thing you can't do is change how your laptop looks and its general design and its general form factor because if you do so, you break compatibility with all the parts people are used to. So you have to introduce a new type of laptop, maybe a 15 inch, maybe, I don't know, something bigger, whatever. But the current Framework 13, you can change all the components. It's how all consumer electronics should be designed every day. And Framework proves that there is zero compromise in build quality or design. So other manufacturers just take some notes. This is what people need, really. And as per the cost, it is much more expensive than a similarly specced laptop. With everything I got in the review unit, this would have cost me 1748 euros with the 20% VAT included. This is with the highest quality screen and the highest battery life possible, the extra Ethernet and DisplayPort ports, 16 gigs of DDR5 RAM, 500 gigs of SSD. Still, this is 250 euros more than an Acer Swift Edge laptop, which has a 16 inch screen, twice the storage, comes with a Windows license and also has a higher resolution screen at 120 Hz as well. And it's an OLED screen at that. But when you want to make your laptop go faster in five years with the Acer Swift whatever thingy, you're gonna have to bin the entire thing and buy an entirely new laptop. You can't upgrade just the motherboard of this laptop. Acer is not going to provide you with parts just to change that. You're gonna have to resell it for a huge loss and rebuy an entirely new laptop. Meaning that, yes, the first purchase of a framework laptop is much more expensive than a similarly specced computer from another manufacturer. Now, I don't know if the Acer is as well built uh, as this thing, as solid, as rigid. No ID, knowing Acer, it's probably a pile of crap, uh, but I mean, it's the same price with much better internals, a bigger screen. So yes, this thing is much more investment right off the bat. But over five years, 10 years, if Framework can manage to not screw things up and can still provide you with upgrades over all that time, then this purchase is gonna be way more economically interesting than buying anything else. So, in the end, this laptop is a fantastic device. I will keep using it a bit more with Linux, maybe take it out to present my lessons as I'm now teaching in a business school as a side gig, and we'll see how it goes and how well it works. I love the concept of the framework laptop. I love the fact that they focus on adding Linux support, not just Windows. I like the modularity and repairability. It's also a very nice laptop to use, so that's a bonus. Now this specific model just doesn't fit my needs because I need a dedicated GPU in my laptop to edit my videos and this thing just doesn't have that. The other model that Framework has, the 16 inch, does have a GPU but it's AMD and I edit with Resolve and it really needs an NVIDIA GPU uh, to run properly. So right now, Framework doesn't really have a product that answers my specific needs but it's gonna fit most people, let's be honest. Not everyone needs specifically an NVIDIA GPU. So this thing, really cool, can only recommend. A 16 inch also looks pretty good. Maybe I'll, I'll give it a shot if at some point they have a review unit for me as well. Uh, in the meantime, I'll watch framework closely. If at some point they manage to build something that fits my specific needs, I will most likely buy that because the mission behind them is just really, really cool. Anyway, this will conclude today's video. I hope you enjoyed listening to it or watching it or whatever else you did with it. As always, all the usual YouTube buttons are underneath the player. You know what to do to make this channel more popular and make me make more content, basically. Click all the things. And if you really like the channel, you can help support it. There are plenty of links in the show notes to do just that and you'll get some pretty nice perks in the process. So thanks everyone for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.